I have, I have, I'll tell you an interesting story about the Fellini movie, but I will say, if, uh, in my kitchen in New York, I have this massive poster of Fellini's Satyricon. Again, why is a child watching this movie? I have no idea what my parents were thinking. Um, but it had a massive effect on me. It had a massive effect aesthetically on me. I love that time in, in uh, cinema where really they're creating stage sets and these are stage actors that they are putting on screen. You know, there's that beautiful, beautiful scenes that are just with these wide open shots. It's, it's like watching a piece of theater for so much of the movie. Um, but did you know in the opening scene of the Satyricon, there is a man that um, it's kind of heavy set, sort of like bumbling looking, uh, right in that opening sequence when they're like running through the streets. And uh, he's an American. And Fellini picked him off the street in Italy uh, because he wanted uh, like a slovenly American to do this role. And um, that American, when he saw himself on screen, was horrified as to what he looked like. He was like, oh my God, this is how people are seeing me. And he dedicated the rest of his life to fitness. And his name is Richard Simmons. That's Richard Simmons at the beginning of that movie. Isn't that insane? That is, it's insane to me that, you know, the Satyricon created, you know, the short shorts revolution that is that man. Classics doing, you know, affecting us in all sorts of ways. They did. And also, I mean, the maze, the, the Minotaur, all that. I mean, again, mythology. Like, there is, you know, Young might say, you know, in our collective unconscious, there are parts, you know, that a maze fundamentally means something to us on a, on a mythical, unconscious level. We see that, we experience what that is, and we share an experience. And whether that's true or not, um, it is an idea worth ex continuing to explore. If that makes sense, um, yeah, that maze, that's a terrifying sort of part of that movie. Again, a child. Why is a child watching this? Um, but I love it still. Something went right because I still enjoy it. Human again, though. There's parts of humanity that we don't love to see about ourselves, but human nonetheless. And some, and again, part of, parts of it that remain un. Uh, not understandable to me. I, I don't fully understand the movie still, which is why I come back to it again and again. I think the pieces of art that I, I continually come back to are the stuff that I haven't figured out. You know, to some degree, a playwright is a watchmaker. We sit around and we tinker and we think about the mathematics of what we're doing. Um, and there's nothing more appealing than seeing a beautiful piece of machinery that you don't fully understand how it works yet. You haven't been able to reverse engineer it. I love that. You know, we're, it's, a, it's a puzzle. Yes, oh yes. <laughs> Sometimes more than I would like to be, but it's good. Actually, that's why the Columbia program is really good because uh, they, uh, they, you know, allow us, the, you know, they train you. You, know, you certainly have to read Aristotle, but then they push you to go, all right, is he right? Does he have to be right? What else can you do with it? So, and sometimes you find that the more you rebel against it, the more you end up loving it. There are parts of Aristotle that are absolutely spot on. Um, and other parts that I haven't figured out yet. It's order, you know, order versus chaos. That's all that it is.